I believe it's some sort of riddle. Why is six afraid of seven? Now, I assume it's because seven is a prime number, and prime numbers can be intimidating. Supernatural. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. And our quote today has basically nothing to do with the episode, except for the fact that it's about the number seven. I can't pass up an opportunity to quote Cass. Yes. So as we talked about in last episode, we are talking about numbers. And starting from today on, we are going to be counting down, starting with seven. Numbers can have already predetermined associations that people have But one of the larger numbers that we encounter on a regular basis within storytelling is the number seven. Seven is generally for a bunch of things that we should be able to list but don't have to. Often we will list them in sequence. If someone asks you to list the colors of the rainbow, there are seven colors in the rainbow, but to list them out of order, list them alphabetically. It would take you a whole lot longer than it would to simply just list them in the order that we've practiced. Seven is kind of that magic number of making something feel large, but we still understand and can follow the details. When one facet is brought up, it's like, oh yeah, there's that one. Some examples that we see in modern storytelling, you have the Umbrella Academy and the seven from the boys both of which have a team of seven core people. When you see the number seven brought up in fairy tales and older storytelling, you'd see it just basically meaning a whole bunch. And then a little bit older, you have something like the Magnificent Seven, or it has significance in some mythology for birth order. You look at something like the seventh son of a seventh son will have magic powers. It's also a favorite number at casinos. I was in Vegas recently, and I see this number a lot because it's associated with luck. So if you are using this with a superstitious character, this is definitely going to play into that character's understanding of the world. And of course, it is also a favorite for applying significance to groups of people. Like we mentioned last episode, the Council of Seven, all of a sudden it becomes an important number, even though the Council tells us basically the same information. It doesn't feel as epic. Seven in cultural terms tends to have a significance in a group of things. It is a sequence of things. So you'll have some religious ties to it. Or you look at the basics of storytelling, one of the main ways to tell a story is the seven-point plot structure, which is one of my favorites. When looking at the movie Seven that I'm sure you've thought about, they tapped into those seven deadly sins, but they also had them in sequence. So each scene, we're focusing on one of the seven and then we're progressing through the story, and this is how we know we're progressing through the story, because we only have these three deadly sins left. Something similar with the Dragon Balls, where you've got seven Dragon Balls, so we can keep track of them as a whole, but the one that we're dealing with right now is the important one. You also have Seven Colors of the Rainbow, which Lee mentioned earlier, or you have the seven notes in the diatonic scale, or the seven days of the week, so again... Seven shows up a lot in both natural forms and in societal structures. I once played a D&D campaign that was based on the seven virtues and their associated deadly sins. And each dungeon that we ran through, lust was countered by chastity. Gluttony was countered by temperance. These kinds of things where we had to understand both. And that's how we felt like we were making progress was we had each of these dungeons and the associated sins, and we knew exactly how many there were to get through. So this is especially a popular number to tap into when it comes to theologically or superstitiously based serial killers and such, because we know, okay, they've got two more victims left because there are two more left in the sequence. 
seven is also associated a lot with many things on a grand scale in our world. So we have the seven wonders of the world. And depending on your school system where you grew up, there were seven continents and seven seas. It's also a very popular number for storytelling when you have different races. You've got elves and dwarves and leonids and this and that. You've got seven major races out there and then sort of variations on them. Because, again, it leans into that epic feeling of something massive, but it also makes it consumable and containable and understandable. And then outside of our world, it does have some supernatural significance, especially within the religious circles. You have the seven circles of hell. So as far as using this in your story, this is going to be how you keep the audience following and keeping track of the grand scale, the plot as a whole. Because we talk a lot about these details and making sure you order it this way and you paragraph it this way in order to make sure the readers understand the scene. But when it comes to the book as a whole, the number seven is going to be really helpful in making it feel like your characters are making progress, but there's still more to go in your story. The best way to approach it is to use seven intentionally and one piece at a time. So whether you set it up something like Seven or the Seven Dragon Balls, where you have this very achievable goal, by segmenting it into those seven different parts and having clear labels with them, you then have a focus for each part of your story. Instead of trying to tackle the entire thing all at once, you can say, well, right now we can deal with this one. We can go after the rest later. But we can focus in right now, right here. You also have the opportunity to be much more subtle with the number. You don't even have to tell the audience out there that there are seven continents or seven major races or whatever. But it's a good number to keep in mind for your world building notes. You can mention that, hey, it's Thor's day. And we know that's one of the days of the week in this particular world but it doesn't really matter. We don't have to remember them. We just understand what this word means because you've contained it enough to have certain parameters that we understand what's going on. And like we said, you do have the benefit with this particular number in using it to your advantage. Having this repeated theme through your story of this number can help your story feel big feel epic and large, but you don't have to go into it all at once. You really can pick at it one at a time. It all just depends on how you want to use it. Do you want to use it as just a nice containment theme to set up a little bit of world building to make your world feel big by giving your world seven species or your team seven different members, whatever? Or do you want to use seven very specifically in more of like a plot structure, whether it's the seven point plot structure or not, something a little bit more like seven where they're dealing with one sin at a time. And even though the number seven does make things big, it makes things epic for your story, don't neglect your intimate moments in between. Part of making those scenes feel really big is having the smaller, closer moments for your characters. And they help balance each other out to make your story feel rich and involved and fascinating. So yes, make it big, use the number seven, but also don't forget to make it small. And then, write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing.